Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. I thought I'd just pick up my camera this morning. It's about 10 a.m. actually and I've been to the gym to work not to work out. I'm going to work out. This is a workout video. I'm doing arms and glutes today because I had a little request. Um, someone commented on my YouTube, which I love. <laughs> they requested me doing an... Okay, <laughs> let me just pause this and show you Mushu right now. Mushu has been neutered, so he has a little cone <laughs> on his head and it's making him go mad. He's getting kind of used to it. He's a little psycho, but it's not that big. Like, it's not as big as I thought it would be. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. But yeah, he, he's a little psycho, so sorry if you hear him in the back. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Someone commented and requested I make an arm day video on my YouTube. And I don't really train just arms, but I did have a really relaxing weekend, and I did not do upper body day. It's Monday today, by the way. I did not do upper body on Saturdays, which, which I usually do upper body Saturday, and I usually do Sunday glutes, and then Monday I take a rest. Since I missed both of those workouts, I'm going to kind of combine them, and I'm going to do arms and glutes today. So I'm really excited. It's supposed to be my rest day, but since I missed those two days, I'm definitely feeling 100% fine to do it. And I'll just take it easy in my workout tomorrow if I'm feeling a little bit sore, but I think I should be fine. For some reason, I'm feeling so tired today. So I'm like chugging my coffee, made a coffee once I got home and I lit my candle. I've been loving this candle. It's my favorite one right now. It's called, oh, it's not gonna focus here. We'll show you like this. There we go. Perfect autumn from Bath and Body Works. Anyways, yeah, feeling a little bit tired, kind of let loose on the weekend. So I'm feeling like I'm really needing this workout and I think glutes and upper body will be a perfect combo. I will stop rambling now. Let's go to the gym and have a great workout. We're gonna start this warm up with a bike ride. Just five minutes leisure cycling just to get the body all nice and warm. Then we're gonna go straight into overhanded rotations. So the rotations are warming up the shoulders. You really wanna challenge your shoulder mobility here by taking a grip that's as close together as you can. You're also gonna feel a pretty good stretch in your pec muscle for this as well. So we're gonna do this a total of 12 times depending on how tight you feel in your chest. Then we're gonna take an underhanded grip with just one of the loops of the band. The reason we do this is because two of the loops, if you wanna try it, it's actually really hard. So you'll find that this is probably a little bit easier for you. You're gonna make sure that you are pulling from your back, not your arms. To ensure that you're doing that correctly, you're gonna to wanna to retract your scapula and engage your back before you start pulling. You also wanna have a tight core. Okay, now we're gonna put the band up on an attachment or on a cage like I'm doing, and we're gonna do a straight arm lat pull down. To get proper form on this one, you want a soft knee, so a little bit of bent in that knee, a little bit of leaning over with your stance, and you're gonna wanna pull with a straight arm. This is a warm up for your lats, so you wanna make sure that you're activating your lats properly by slightly externally rotating your arm the cue I like to use for this one is try to put emphasis on your pinky finger when you're pulling. So you should feel it on your pinky more than your index finger. Okay, we're going right into leg swings. So this is just to warm up the hip, kind of a dynamic movement, just to get all the blood flowing into that area. And we're gonna do about 10 to 12 on each leg. After we're done 10 to 12 front leg swings, we're gonna go to some side leg swings. Same idea here, 10 to 12 on each side. This is one of my favorite hip mobility exercises. It is a little bit dynamic with still kind of having that static stretch vibe. So what we're doing here is we're making a 90 degree with our legs, so a, like a box, it's, sometimes it's called a box rotation, but I like to call it 90-90. We're taking our chest and we're pushing it down to our knee three times and then we're switching over to the other side. I want you to try to keep your heels on the ground when switching from one side to the next. Same idea here where we're bringing our chest down, but here we're stretching a little bit more of our adductors and less of the front of our hip. We're gonna perform 10 to 12 of these pulsing stretches. 
Next, we're gonna work on our ankle mobility. So ankle mobility is so important when you're doing lower body. I even like to do it when I'm doing upper body warm-ups because the ankles just overall need more attention. The reason for this is that if we're lacking in ankle mobility, it can affect the hip and the knee and the spine and everything kind of from the ground upwards. So that's why I really like to take my time. What I'm doing here is pushing my knee as far forward of my toe as I can while keeping my heel planted firmly on the ground. You might be feeling a stretch on the front of your ankle or you could be feeling it in the back at your Achilles, kind of going all the way up your calf. But if I was to say any stretch that you should be doing, it would be this one. We're gonna perform 12 reps on each side. From there, we're gonna go to our hamstring. So I like to do this one just because my hamstrings are always super tight from sitting and just from every day-to-day -day, uh, stressors. So I always feel a really tight hamstring. And that's why I like to give a little bit of extra attention even if I'm not doing hamstring work in my workout. I do this stretch about five or six times on each side. It's glute activation time, one of my favorites. So what I'm doing here is called a glute bridge pyramid. I'm gonna start with one rep going into a glute bridge and then one rep with abduction. Then I'm gonna go to two reps glute bridge, two reps abduction and so forth, all the way to eight. And by the end of it, your glutes are going to be screaming at you, but it is the best kind of pain. Starting off our workout here, we have sumo deadlifts, one of my favorite exercises of all time. I am starting with a relatively lighter weight. I'm gonna do two sets of this at this weight for 10 reps. Now I'm gonna take this weight off and I'm just gonna increase my weight. I'm doing another two sets at 10 reps with this higher weight. This weight is much higher, so I wanna note a couple things as far as effort level goes. I really wanna make sure I have my breathing down properly, that intra-abdominal pressure pressing out on my core. I wanna make sure I have my lats engaged properly, emphasis on the pinky finger as well. And I wanna make sure my glutes are working as they should be. At the bottom of the rep, I wanna be engaging my glutes to lift the weight. Now I'm putting even more weight on, not substantially a lot more, but I am doing another two sets at 10 reps of this new weight. The effort level is gonna be a little bit more intense, so I really wanna make sure I'm engaging the right muscles when I'm lifting to protect my back and my joints. I did want to note that at the top of my rep, you'll notice that I'm not over hyperextending in my back. I am squeezing my glutes, but I'm not leaning super far back to hyperextend in that area. Let's set up for our hip thrusts. Good thing about hip thrusts is you can usually do as much weight as you were just sumo deadlifting. So I'm just pushing it to a bench and I'm just going to use the same weight. How I like to set up for my hip thrusts is I sit my butt on the floor, I pull the barbell as close into my waist as I possibly can, and then I pull my feet up as much as I can as well. Then I put my elbow and my other elbow on the bench, hoist my back up, and then I situate the barbell. What we're doing here is pushing up the weight and abducting with our legs. This is gonna target all three of our glute muscles, glute max as you're hoisting the weight up, glute medius and minimus as you are abducting your legs. We're gonna perform four sets of these eight times through with taking about a one to two minute break in between the sets. Next, we're gonna perform a barbell row. So this is actually called a pendele row. The position I wanna be in is almost as if I'm going to go do an RDL. So I wanna hinge at the hips, I wanna feel a stretch in my hamstrings, place a little bit more weight in my heels and pull the weight up with my back. I wanna pinch my elbows close to my sides, having an overhanded grip on the barbell, and I wanna set the barbell down on the floor after every rep to reset. I would suggest you take it a little bit easy on the weight here if you're not super familiar with the form yet. I'm gonna put 
five pounds more on each side, just because I feel like I can do it. We're doing eight reps, three rounds through. Next, we're gonna go for a push press. So with the push press, it's kind of like a shoulder press, except you're gonna let your legs help you a tad. So if you can see me bending my legs and shooting the weight up, I'm letting that power go from my legs to my shoulders to push the weight. There's no disconnect, it's all flowing as one. You're gonna wanna brace your core to protect your back on this one, and you're gonna wanna tuck your elbows slightly in front of you when you're pushing up to protect your shoulder. The barbell should end in full extension with your ears by your biceps. We are supersetting the push press with a bent over rear delt fly. I'm using dumbbells for this exercise and I'm really focusing on not swinging the weight with momentum. I'm really trying to use my rear delts and my rhomboids to bring my scapula together and I'm bracing my core. Now we're going to do some tricep dips. So what I'm really making sure of here is that I'm not going down too far. I always want to make sure that my shoulder is not going below my elbow at the bottom of each rep. Doing this will protect my shoulder. And then at the top of the rep, you want to squeeze your arms straight so that you're working your triceps. As you can see, this was a struggle for me. So because tricep dips are so challenging, there is a way to make it easier. I just looped a band around my handles and I'm gonna jump up and put my knees inside the band to help me up. This is gonna be much easier, but you're still gonna feel that tricep burn, I assure you. We are doing three sets of eight reps of tricep dips. Now we're going into glute kickbacks. So with the glute kickback, you wanna have a little bit of a bent over stance, soft knee and strong leg on that leg that we're pushing off of, because that's your stability point. So you wanna kick the leg back, activating the glute as much as possible. What I like to do is stick my toe out, so I like to externally rotate my femur just slightly so that I get all of the fibers of the glute max working. We're gonna do 12 on one leg and then switch the cable over to your other leg and perform 12 as well. And we're gonna do that a total of three times. Now we're gonna go into a bicep superset. So first off, we are curling, hammer curling technically because your thumbs are remaining on top. And we're gonna do it with a plate. What happens when we do it this way is we're decreasing the range of motion and increasing time under tension. As you can see, my biceps are never fully at rest. They're always kind of like holding that plate up slightly. Then we're going to go into wide grip bicep curls. For these, you wanna externally rotate your arms and have the dumbbells curling up on either side of you. I like to squeeze my triceps at the bottom of the rep just so I know I'm getting full range of motion and I like to push my elbows into my sides. This just gives me a little bit more stability and it makes me able to not use momentum when I'm curling upwards. We're gonna perform three sets of these exercises, 10 reps each. Our last exercise of the workout, we made it this far guys, it's a shoulder press. We're just strict shoulder pressing here, seated. Again, you wanna make sure your elbows are slightly tucked and that you have a tall, proud chest and that you're ending with your biceps close to your ears in full extension. We're gonna do three sets of eight reps for these ones and I want you to challenge yourself on the weight. Okay, so I'm done my workout. That was a really good one. I think there was like 10, 10 moves in all. Really a good session. I don't feel like I did too much on one specific area. I think I like just did it pretty much perfectly. Tomorrow is my quad focus day, so I'll be squatting. That's why I wanted to deadlift today. Also, I wanted to say deadlifting today would be good for arm day because it warms up the arms as well. So yeah, just thinking about that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you check down in the description box, it'll have all the sets and reps and everything all laid out for you there. So you can like screenshot it or just take it to the gym with you. Sorry, I'm talking with my hand a lot. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're doing well and stay tuned for another video. Thanks for watching guys, bye.